Welcome back everybody, your boy Nathro is back on the scene. And I've got a video here that caught my attention from Simple History. It's called, How Long Did a Person Stay Alive After Being Guillotined? I've heard so many things about people supposedly still being alive for a couple of seconds afterwards and I've even heard that some people blink <laughs> or something to say to like tell people how they're you know still alive even after they got their head chopped off but um yeah so this this video ought to be interesting <laughs> let's take a look at it ah okay yeah <laughs> right to the point <clears throat> how long did a person's head stay alive after being guillotined creepy Beheading as a form of execution has been around for centuries. By 1792, during the time of the French Revolution, it had become a highly efficient and quick form of execution in the shape of the now famous guillotine. King Louis XVI himself signed the bill that made the guillotine the official method of execution. The guillotine was a tall wooden structure first used in revolutionary France for beheading someone using a heavy slanted blade that suddenly dropped down a set of vertical grooves. It would usually chop the condemned person's head off in one clean action, whereupon the severed head would unceremoniously drop into a basket below. Okay, so about the blade, I heard that it originally didn't have that slant. I want to say it had either a curved blade or just a straight one. I can imagine the problem with the straight one is that you're not always gonna get a clean cut. Maybe it can get stuck or something. That can lead to a whole bunch of problems because the entire purpose of using the guillotine was supposedly it was more of a humane way to execute people. So, yeah. Dr. Joseph Ignis Guillotine, who it was named after, claimed that the guillotine made execution as painless as possible. However, later on, the there device was also known as Madame la Guillotine, la Dame, the Lady, la Veuve, the Widow, le Rassoir National, the National Razor, and Louis Set. But hmm. was the execution wow. by it truly painless? There is a famous story about the execution of Charlotte Corday by the Guillotine in 1793 during the French Revolution. Just after she had been beheaded, a member of the crowd leapt forward and slapped poor Charlotte across the face to see if she was still conscious. It's reported that her face then blushed at the indignity of being slapped. There are even stories of how heads mm. blinked after being guillotined. Yeah. Antoine Lavoisier was a French scientist at the height of the French Revolution in 1794. He was condemned to death during the Reign of Terror and supposedly agreed to blink after his head was guillotined as one last experiment for science. His servants noted that Lavoisier blinked up to 15 seconds after the execution. Whoa. 15 seconds. 15 seconds? Damn, that's a long time. The eerie part is, is that he even said beforehand that, hey, I'm going to do this, you know, <laughs> in the name of science. And he did. I mean, it's kind of hard to say that it was a coincidence but now that i think about it if i was gonna get executed shoot i think i would prefer the guillotine say over you know some of the more old school ways like getting stoned to death <laughs> or getting your head bashed in multiple times or something so yeah compared to that stuff this <laughs> does seem a lot more humane but yeah still Though there are many stories like this claiming that lucid decapitation or consciousness exists momentarily after beheading, and though these stories are based on real people and real events, they are most likely exaggerations or anecdotes that have become embellished over time by countless retellings. However, it's often been wondered by scientists how long the head keeps on functioning after it's been guillotined from the body. One of the chief reasons for the introduction of the guillotine mm. was that it was deemed to be very humane. There you go. But some factions <laughs> in the medical community were seriously questioning this. Dr. Samuel Thomas Summering theorized that in fact a decapitated head could continue to live and feel for up to a full 15 minutes after being guillotined, and therefore the suffering was worse than death by hanging. 15 minutes. 15 minutes oh my god if that's true can you imagine 
the type of shit that she would be feeling. I wonder how conscious, you know, you would actually be. Maybe you're just like in a state of delirium. Maybe you wouldn't feel anything. Like maybe you just couldn't even like conjure a coherent thought. But if you could, oh man, that that would that would just be bizarre to live in those moments. Let's keep going. But Dr. Jean Celedo, a leading pioneer of modern day medicine at the time, counter argued that the difference between killing a person or a butcher killing an animal by severing its head resulted in the same effect, immediate death and total end of life. Others, such as Pierre Jean Georges Cabanas, argued that victims did not suffer once guillotined because the nape of the neck is where death can be caused instantly in people and animals. The hmm. twitches and the severed heads were, in his opinion, purely mechanical muscle movements without consciousness. There has been many well-documented cases of animals like chickens, cockroaches, frogs, snakes, and praying mantises surviving for a long period of time after they've been decapitated. For example, there are many accounts and videos of rattlesnakes that have been beheaded and still have been able to bite people with their head. Because the guillotine was used in France all the way up until 1977, Damn. there has been scientific research carried out using more advanced methodology on actual guillotine human heads. It has been widely reported that sometimes you will see some eye and mouth movements from a guillotined head, but today scientists are mostly convinced that this is just involuntary reflex actions that linger on in the aftermath. But still doubt and conflicting reports linger about this whole issue. One of the most compelling accounts of consciousness being said to still exist for a significant amount of time after being guillotined was in 1905. Henri Languille was executed by the device in Orleans, France. Dr. Gabriel Borio observed that the decapitated head was still twitching, and when he called out the man's name, his eyes looked upwards and stared directly at the doctor. Oh. It was claimed that this lasted for between 25 to 30 seconds. Though later, in 1939, the Journal of the American Medical Association thought Boirio was exaggerating his account of what happened, as other witnesses that had been present at the execution said life only seemed to last for a maximum of 10 seconds. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Fuck that, man. God, that would just be so creepy. A freaking head that had just been removed from a body. Like its eyes just slowly looking at you after you call the name. <laughs> oh. oh man. I think the creepiest thing would be if they tried to still talk while they were beheaded, even if they can't make out a, a clear word, maybe just like some kind of sound. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh. Oh, that would just be weird. And that the man's reactions were less pronounced. Today, scientists agree that once the victim is guillotined, the separated head and the body dies from a combination of things. Shock, blood loss, loss of blood pressure, and anoxia, which is the total depletion of the level of oxygen within the body. The separated body, as such, lives for about another 60 seconds until the heart finally stops beating. As for the decapitated head, scientists say that it can technically have enough oxygen stored for metabolism to continue for about seven seconds. Though parts of the body may live on for a very short time after being guillotined, the catastrophic effect of being decapitated means that any consciousness would be extinguished almost instantly. So for about two to three seconds, the brain may still be functioning, but any intelligence would be in a fixed, unresponsive, comatose state, unaware of anything. But there has still not been conclusively Damn. proven evidence one way or another if consciousness really remains significantly after decapitation. Maybe in time we'll find out what really happens in those short moments before life is extinguished. At the same time, how can you accurately measure that, you know? <clears throat> uh, I was waiting Hello, for Hello, Simple History <laughs> fans. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell for more history videos. Well, I'm already subscribed, so don't worry about me. <laughs> hey guys, check out this Simple History merch on Teespring. There's t-shirts, mugs, stickers, phone cases, and much more. Link in the description below. Nice. All right, so that was how long did a person stay alive after being guillotined by simple history. Yeah, some of what they talked about, um, 
I kind of already knew just about how there was a debate whether the person was still actually alive or conscious or just um, it was like a coincidental thing that they either blinked or blushed or something like that. I had read up on something in an article a couple of years ago how scientists were examining the possibility of head transplants. Yes, transplanting someone's head onto a body. I know it sounds crazy, but like, I, I want to say that people were really looking into that. Anyway, guys, that's all the time I have for this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, as always, please don't forget to like, subscribe, show some love in the comments below. Please do all that good stuff. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace out, guys.